Anyways, my name is Stu Kalinske. I'm the uh, Vice President of Sales for IP Phone. Uh, IP Phone has been a, a partner of uh, TCG for three years now, and we're delighted. We almost feel a little bit like family. As I was putting my presentation today together, I was starting to get a little teary-eyed because I feel close to a lot of people. The only bad news about that is that would make Eric your crazy uncle. <laughs> okay, but he gets invited to Thanksgiving anyways. So uh, we're going to go over a little bit about what IP Phone is doing, uh, who we are. Most of you know who we are. We have some great relationships with folks in the room here. If we haven't uh, met before, this will give you a good sketch about who we are and, and why uh, we want to be your go-to provider for hosted PBX and broadband services where we have it, okay? So let's take a look. I sort of changed the name. Everybody understands here. This is called your lunch and earn, all right? Because we feel that, you know, our product uh, sells itself, and we ha we're going to talk about how to get more MRC out of the products that we have going forward. So our mantra this year with TCG is that we are all in, okay? We love you guys. I mean, we love you guys. <laughs> Accepting this award, to, I'd like to thank everybody. We love you guys, so let's, let's move forward and talk about this. So when I say welcome to 2018, I'm not talking about you know, your 2018 or mine. I'm talking about our 2018. And I'm going to show you a little bit about what we did in 2017. And we are certainly on the uptick uh, with uh, supplying services to your organization. So a little bit about IP Phone historically. I'm not going to you know, get to a deep dive into it, but we've been a, a service provider and a CLEC since 1997. We're a Broadsoft shop. I found out that we were number four Broadsoft implementation in 2002. And uh, we currently run about 40,000 seats, about 4,000 separate logos all across the United States, about 70% within the state of Florida. But we're also doing you know, international deployments now, as a matter of fact. Uh, two of our folks right now are putting in uh, an 800-room Club Med in uh, Santo Domingo, all right? And everybody, when they were asking who wanted to do the install, it was me, 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 all right? So there's two, two months over there. So we specialize only in B2B uh, cloud communications, and we try to uh, project ourselves as using best-in-class products and services. You may know that uh, Cisco, uh, you know, it's not a big, it was announced about six months ago, Cisco bought Broadsoft for $1.9 billion, you know, chump change to Cisco. But it looks like, and it hopefully I heard some uh, presentations by them over the last couple of days, and it looks gonna, like it's going to be a good marriage, all right? So people, at least the name recognition is going to be in place. So uh, this is about, this is who we are, um, and we have a dedicated team. And, uh, you know, we like to profess that we are high-touch, hands-on, all right? For Eric, maybe generally it's hands-off, <laughs> all right? But anyways, we're all there for you. So we have Eric and John. John, Eric, why don't you stand up? All right, sit down. John, John and John Fakara. So, you know, and we have also Abraham Sue, which some of you have known as our sales engineer, who's not here today, but he, what he does is he is available all the time to go on complex situations, to do webinars on admin portals, uh, contact centers, uh, anything that's different, anything that has a little meat on the bone that you need to talk to somebody a little more sophisticated, he comes in either on-prem or by webinar anywhere you want. Uh, Elizabeth, a lot of you know, she does all of our quoting and fixes and all the revisions, and I think we did 10,000 quotes last year. I think 8,500 were revisions. All right? <laughs> it's not two, I need three. No, it was two. No, I need three. <laughs> all right? And of course, I'm available at all times to go on sales calls. I don't care where it is and when it is. I'm ready to go. All right? And uh, Damien, our CEO, also is available to go. And it's a rare occasion when you see a service provider offer up the, the uh, CEO of the company to make decisions for you, get pricing, and will take your call on Saturday. He's also on the escalation list if you ever have one. The only name that's not on the escalation list, thank God, is Your. mine. Okay. Can you pronounce his last name? Chimilevsky. There'll be a quiz at the end on the spelling, too, so I hope you paid attention. All right. So uh, <clears throat> here's our TCG IP phone conglomerate uh, since the inception of our company, of our relationship. We have had over 500 successful installations with TCG. That's pretty good, I think. And, uh, you know, I don't know how many seats is involved, but uh, we've been, it's actually, it's over 5,000 installed seats. And uh, the, I think there was only one or two that actually really went sour, and I think we fixed that up and what have you, and I'll tell you why we fixed that. Um, our average MRC is over 500, which I think is pretty good in the hosted world. 
And as Dan mentioned before, we have products and services that you can add on and sell to your clients, which can pick up the monthly rather than seats and just bandwidth. We have a whole suite of services. I'll go over them in just a minute. And we've also installed 100 fiber circuits ranging anywhere from 10 meg to a gig, you know, in, uh, based on your quotes and, and needs. All right, so again, I mentioned that our goal is to be your go-to provider, period. We don't want to be an afterthought. We don't want to be a me too. We want to be the person that you think about when you're looking for a successful uh, implementation uh, for your clients so that you can feel comfortable knowing that you're in good hands. All right, so again, I mentioned that we are all in with you guys. You know, you say jump and we say how high, all right? And actually this year, we'd like, we're happy to uh, announce that we have become a gold sponsor with TCG. So we're happy about that, okay? <laughs> Eric wrote the check out of his commission and uh, he said, let's do it. Those are bitcoins, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow there'll be a few left, less in the, in the pile, all right? All right, here's our monthly, you know, we have an ongoing spiff all the time. I didn't want to sort of, you know, put it out there right away, but, uh, you know, you guys like this kind of thing. We're offering up the money, all right? You know, we try to be competitive with anything else that's out there today, all right? But I will encourage you that we have products and services that can get you from two, 2x to 3x if you do a deep dive with us, all right? You'll all see that. This is all available on the web, and we have packages for everybody on your way out. So why do you want to choose our company? Here's why. First of all, we have experience and expertise. Been around for 20 years. Our product suite, which I'm going to dive into a little bit after this, is full bore. We have everything because we are a CLEC, because we are a service provider, because we do bandwidth, so we have relationships with every telecom service that is available and what customers need. All right? Uh, simplicity and flexibility, I mean, we can do, you know, we take two phones or we'll take 2,000 phones, and we have customers to attest to all of it. Our support system, as many of you know, we, we do our own truck rolls. We have six trucks on the road. You know, we show up. We show up for porting. We show up for training. We show up for everything, all right? And the customers really like that, all right? Our support uh, function is we have tiers one, two, and three, you know, which, you know, one's a help desk. Then you have a little more complex, tier three available. And our CTO and Abraham and everybody else is available when the call, when the call is needed. Um, unique to the industry, and you're all familiar with this, we have a six-month satisfaction guarantee for every new customer, all right? This says that IP phone is on the hook to perform to what your expectations are for six months. After that, all bets are off, but just kidding, <laughs> all right? But generally speaking, the, the modus operandi of this uh, document is that if someone's happy after six months, they're going to be happy for 10 years, all right? You know, the gestation period of getting it together and the migration and the transition is usually where all the turbulence is. So if we do what we say we're going to do, this should actually be a moot point. And uh, when you start getting your new quotes with us, with us, we've changed the format a little bit and have included this document for the prospective customer to see prior to making their decision as a comfort move. Okay? So you'll see that. Is there any flexibility with that? Is there, there is flexibility. You know, if someone says, well, listen, six months is not enough, I say, what do you want, six years? Yeah, we'll do it. All right? Because you know what? We, we, with a 99% per, uh, uh, rate of success in our business, it's a good gamble. It's a good gamble. All right? And we'll also, we, you know, later on I'll talk about the fact that we have made our terms a little more flexible. So we want every sale. We, we don't want to walk, lose anything for minutia. All right? Eric, minutia. All right? So what would you prefer in your, in your perspective uh, decision making? Hands-on or phones mailed? On-site training or remote video? A voice QoS router or just hope for the best? And by the way, at the end of this, I have a router, a new router back there that I put on the table, which is the new Edgemark 2900, which actually offers, by the way, fundamental simultaneous bandwidth uh, usage, as in it's a sort of fundamental SD-WAN. All right, without a lot of the extra charges and bells and whistles, all right, which you, and there's some documents that you can read about it, but that's the one we are using now. It also offers up to 100 simultaneous call paths at any given, so you don't have to, to talk about upping licenses, all right? Single vendor for all your services or still de dealing with, you know, multi-invoices. One of the, you know, poster child reasons why people went to VOIP services is so they could eliminate all the s separate bills that they were getting from all these companies and having to look at them. So with our company, we are in a position to offer anybody that you bring to us one bill for everything, all right? 
six month guarantee or no. These are, you know, these are your decisions. CEO escalation, which I told you about, or just tier one support and you know, hopefully you get a call back. All right, local sales engineer or not. I mean, obviously I'm pressing on the fact that we're in your backyard for, for much of the business that you do, which does not dismiss the fact that we have installations all over the United States and in the Caribbean and Mexico and in Europe. So we do business everywhere and we'll send people and I have an interesting announcement to make, I'll make it right now. Any deal that you bring us that's over $1,000, anywhere in the contiguous 48 states, we will install at no cost. Done. It could, be a com it could be all hosted PBX. It could be all a, a, a bundle of bandwidth in a PBX. It could be just uh, bandwidth. Whatever it is, no installation charge regardless. All right? Good perk? All right. Anywhere in the contiguous 48 states. All right. So let me move forward. I just went yesterday to a symposium, a two-day symposium in Miami Beach with a group of uh, fairly high-level pioneering you know, telecom uh, people and cloud people. And the word on the street is that, you know, there's a next wave of products and services coming down the pike, all right? You know, the industry evolves on an ongoing basis, and I'm just going to submit to you sort of, you know, offhanded right now, is that it's in your best interest to embrace things like collaboration, workforce management, analytics, all the kinds of things that people are actually looking for, and you can use these as lead-in uh, points of sale rather than just you know, replacing your old phone system with a new one, or getting less expensive bandwidth than you had before, et cetera, et cetera, all right? So I encourage you to look into this. I had an uh, interesting awakening. You know, I was listening to some presentations, and I'm a little more you know, versed in that kind of thing right now as well. So IP phone, as you'll see going forward, is evolving. We've embraced these services. We have these services. We tested these services. We've installed these services, and they are. This is, well, here's our product suite, okay? Our basic product suite. Uh, hosted PBX, easy PBX, we'll go over these real, so unified communications. The words hosted PBX are not even used anymore, it's called UCAS, okay? Unified communications as a service. So it embellishes all of the sort of embracing and surrounding services that people need for integrated mobility, you know, analytics and the like. SIP trunking, okay, which I don't know if a lot of you really understand it, but we have worldwide SIP trunking and I'll show you the rates that we just lowered uh, to wet your whistle. Uh, internet access, we, we have, uh, you know, uh, solutions with AT&T in 22 states, FPNL, and we're bringing on a few more as time goes on. We're in negotiations right now. And, of course, the contact center world, which is big money business, all right, which we've done about 15 or 20 of, the contact world is moving into what they call omni-channel contact centers. So some of you, if you've called, you know, some big utility or some big company or an airline and you're about, they say you have, you know, 23 minute wait, would you rather be on hold or what? Or we'll call you back and you won't lose your place in line. That's part of the omni-channel functionality. Or would you like us to text you with the information? Or would you like, a, like it on Facebook? Or would you like it in any way, a variety of, mess, of ways? So that's omni-channel. We have the product. The interesting thing is that it's now, instead of $35 or $40 a seat, it's $100 a seat, which really sounds like a lot, but if you're selling things that cost $1,000, right, I'm going to know why that sales rep didn't close that deal today if I can pay attention to the phone call. How long were they on the phone? When did they take the call? So the analytics piece is paramount, and people are moving into this fluidly, all right? So it's becoming much more, much more, uh, I mean, the, I'm going to a convention in about two months, which is the CRM Contact Center Convention. And there's 4,000 people that go. So that's how big the industry is. It's in the trillions. Let's go forward. <clears throat> so our product suite. Uh, we, we are, as I mentioned, a broad soft shop. Our platform is in the NAP. We've been doing this for a very long time. So broad soft, and the reason I sort of preface broad soft here is because broad soft, generally speaking, is utilized for, because of its iconic name in the industry, <laughs> because you can handle customized or tailored solutions, because you can do a deeper dive into the products. Um, generally speaking, when you're into the medium, the medium, mid, mid-sized market or large-sized market, they want the kind of the name recognition and all that, that goes along with it. Also, we do have these two, those two items at the bottom called Team One and the analytics product, which are con you know, included with and offered through the Broadsoft platform only. All right, which I'll get into just uh, in just a moment. All right, so that's Broadsoft. 
So uh, I'm, I'm also happy to say that for some of you who have been quoting us over the past, we have changed and are making an offer right now. Any quote we do is unlimited long distance, no price change. So I don't have to ask you how many minutes do they need? How many minutes do I get? Everything now is unlimited. No price increase, all the same, okay? We understand our competition, so the move is in. So you don't have to consider that in your, uh, when you're making your presentations. Um, we have a new product called Easy PBX, all right? And the reason we have an Easy PBX is about two years ago, we bought a company up in Jacksonville, and they had a platform, and we bought the platform along with the company. <laughs> so we have the platform, and it's more of an asterisk kind of platform, but the point of the matter is it allows us for economies of scale and to, as you can see, compete with some of the products that are out there today where you get sort of an all-in, very easy decision, no questions asked, this is how much it is per person per month, okay? So we have our uh, Easy PBX product. I'm sure a lot of you have seen it before. Uh, it's a standardized proposal. Uh, it's, you know, standard configuration, single location, generally speaking for the SMB market up to, you know, maybe 20 or 25 users before they start needing a little more, you know, intricate uh, solutions. So it is available. Single location. They can have multiple locations. They can have multiple locations. The answer is yes. Okay. And we've done, and we've done them. As a matter of fact, probably mm, between 30 and 40 percent of the uh, uh, implementations we're doing right now are that product, okay? And it's working just fine, and it works, and everybody gets the, uh, the Yealing T46 uh, gigabit phone is included in the, in the product. Is that, is that on Broadsoft? No, okay. it's, on a different, it's on a different platform, okay? Which, you know, when you think about it, there's one Broadsoft, and then there's 5,000 other platforms. All right, so, and they all work and everybody's doing a lot of business. So, the com you know, our competitors and the people you do business with also are using proprietary uh, platforms which are written in that, in that code. All right? Anyways, we also made a change to it too, and Jen, I'll answer your question here. <clears throat> it now includes, uh, we were charging extra for the, uh, for the auto attendant. It's now included at zero. You can't do your delivery No. No. At least not, you know, because uh, they can buy off-the-shelf kinds of analytics, but they would have to have their own software. The analytics that are related to Broadsoft come through the platform, okay? And, and by the way, we have about 15% uh, of our logoed customers are using the analytics. And I got to tell you something. Uh, we have one company, a big trucking company, 175 phones, four, 40 miles outside of Orlando. They put in the analytics and found out that people were hanging up on them on the fourth and fifth ring. And you know how much it is to rent a truck, uh, a double semi for a week? How much is that sale worth, you know, when you figure out and who's, who's not taking the calls? So the analytics are very, very important to people. Don't underestimate reports, all right? And it, because it's a, it makes the sale more sticky. And it's a lead-in, by the way. If I went up to you and said, how would you like to know how many people hung up on your company when they called in today? Would you like to know that? Yes. Right? It's a motherhood question. I know the answer before I asked it. Right? The answer is yes. I'd love to know that. You can do that? Well, yeah, but you've got to do everything else. All right? <laughs> Stu, can I ask you a question? Now that you brought that up, would, if, if they hang up, will, the system, will your system call them? We can do that. Actually, it's an interesting thing. And to your point, this can do it. It actually ha it, it forwards the call to an agent or to somebody who will get that to say, call this customer. Whoever it is that they call. Yeah, it's a, it's a similar situation. It's an isolated one that you came up with. Customer, whoever hung up and then calls the... I'll, I'll have to I'll explain it to you later because this is really an isolated... But we did, our, we did our homework on that, Renee. Okay. okay? But anyways, the analytics is something cool. That, you know, there's a flyer in your in the brochure in the package that I've given you. But there are also there are YouTube presentations. I, I encourage you to do this to look at this stuff because you're going to get asked about it. All right, and it makes products easier to sell. All right, let's go on. So Team One, Team One is a Broadsoft product. It revolves around workforce management. It separates the 2,000 emails you got today from. 3,000 people you don't want to hear from to the people that are important to you in your company, all right? So it's an overlay application. It's $5.99 a month per person, per month, all right? And it allows companies to communicate, collaborate, share calendars, do WebExes, all, everything you would want to do in workforce management, all right? And bring people from the outside. So if you're doing projects or what have you. And it, does, it is not relegated to Broadsoft only. I don't care if you find somebody with an Avaya system 
we can put this on top of it. All right? This, ladies and gentlemen, is next gen products. You're all familiar with the word collaboration. It's becoming almost a, you know, an overused word anymore. But this whole concept of, you know, of having your, your company uh, be intact and whole is becoming very, very popular. We do webinars on it. We have it on our own company. I have the app on my phone. So, you know, demos are available, et cetera. All right? That's team one. The contact center, this omni-channel uh, contact center, uh, there was a company called Tessera. Uh, Broadsoft bought the company about uh, a couple of years ago, and they are the, you know, a very sophisticated omni-channel contact center application. Their biggest customer is Office Depot. They have 4,000, you know, you know, agents worldwide, and they do all of the things that are on this screen, all right? So it's very interactive. You know, the price point obviously is different, but when you're talking to someone who wants this kind of information because it's good for their company, all right, this is, this is chump change comparatively. I like to break things down to the, least, the lowest common denominator. So if, it's if a seat is $100 a month, it sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Sounds like a real lot. How much do you think that is per hour per rep? It's about 250 So I'm paying you $30 an hour to take phone calls here, all right? and help customers. So for another $2.50 an hour, I make you more productive. Is it worth it? Yes. All right? So you got to do the math. There's a lot of ways to skin a cat, because if I tell you it's $100 per person, you know, you, you lose your mind. All right? So anyways, this product is available, demonstrable. So it will come out and give, let people try it out, you know, in their companies, you know, on a demo basis. All right? I talked about the analytics. So this has been out for about seven or eight months. It's the the take rate on it is terrific. We charge $2 per month per person. The, if a company has 20 employees, they have to put everybody on it. You can't isolate four people that you don't want to analyze, if you will. All right? So everybody has to have it. But our, the MRC is terrific. So for $2 a month, most people say what? Is that all? That's it. That's it? Two, yeah? Right? So now, you know, for $22 a month, and they're all in with analytics, your MRC goes up, the customer is happy, et cetera, et cetera, and all things take off from there. So I, I, again, I encourage you to do a little homework on it. We're going to come out, by the way, with a series of webinars over the next 30 days. Uh, Abraham, our sales engineer, is going to do the demos. I'll do a little bit talking, but it's going to be available, and you'll all be invited whenever they occur, okay? Please. Uh, we do internet. So we have uh, association with various companies. Uh, along the board, and uh, anywhere we are, all we do is you give us the address, we give you the, we give you the number. In some cases, we're going to be extremely competitive. Some places, you know, there are other competitive. All we want is a shot, and we don't want to lose a deal over a few dollars, you know, because of our, you know, we have a close relationship with you, and we'll get it going. So this is our bundled bandwidth pricing. <coughs> bundled means what? It's with what? It's with, it's with the, no, it's, everything's with the internet. It's, it's with the PBX. It's with UCAS. All right? Because the benefit here, by the way, to you, regardless of a $10 or $15 delta in the amount of money per month that a circuit is, if they're getting the PBX and they get our bandwidth, who are they going to call? You. Me. I know I'm not on the list. I told you. <laughs> All right? But they're going to call our company for everything. If they use one company for PBX and one company for internet, how many calls might they have to make? Seven. At least two, and maybe seven. All right? They went that away. So I encourage you, and I know some of the, a lot of the people in this room have offered us and given us those kinds of customers where it's a single vendor concept for everything, and I think their, their happiness level is a little bit better. All right? Plus, with our EdgeMark device, we can go in there and look, at their, look at, their, at their signal and their PBX and determine what it is and take the appropriate marks instead of saying, it's your internet company, you've got to call them. All right? And of course, you know, when we're talking about fiber, it's obviously in space where you know, they, they require fiber you know, for the regular business anyways. All right, let's go on. We can, we can install anywhere. We have probably 15 to 20 installations in the Caribbean, South America, Mexico, and Europe. All right, we put a gateway in. It allows them to do local, local uh, calling, and it recognizes, obviously, the DIDs and you know, whether, how to transmit the call. So we have experience uh, in our technical people and, and, the, and the system of getting it done. Okay? And, just, and by the way, 
This thing is becoming more popular too. People are working everywhere. International companies have people all over the planet now. And to accommodate them, you gotta be, have the facility to recognize uh, the, their needs as well. Okay, so SIP trucking, we have new pricing right now. It's $8 a SIP. Okay, not bad? Not bad, huh? All right, if you have whatever the long distance is, you call us, we'll come up with a, a deal for you, depending on how much it is, where they're calling, et cetera. All local, of course, is you know, unlimited. But it's eight dollars a sip trunk anywhere in the world. Could, could we tack on a couple of bucks? Do, hey, man, you can do whatever you want. You know, big boy. <laughs> Dan wants you to. All right. <laughs> all day. Okay, so uh, you know we're getting we're in the sip business and we're offering it and you know there's a lot out there and uh, so we want to be at least considered when you have those kinds of opportunities. So as I mentioned before, we do everything. So we have all the fax solutions, e-fax, cloud fax, which you know, all fax-based services, uh, integrated mobility. We have you know, the, our mobile link, you know, uni uh, unified communications app that's either, that go on the phone, uh, CRM in in integration, voicemail, all of these things are available. We're doing an installation with a company now that has an office in Singapore, all right? We can't port numbers there, but we get them new numbers and they don't mind, all right? Because it, it's an enterprise-grade implementation. Yeah, in Singapore, Singapore numbers, okay? All right, we also, uh, we do have the expertise to offer and install and provision things like overhead paging and door openers, which are extremely important to uh, hospitals, hotels, schools, all these kinds of things where they have all of those requirements, not only needs, but requirements. So we can bring them into the uh, entire hosted solution, and we've done a lot of these things, all right? We actually have some relationships with overhead paging companies that you know, we can bring to the table and just price it out. When you say door openers, are you referring to like gates, like intercom? At the yeah, gate? yeah, it, it's hooked in. They get an extension license on their PBX, and they can open the door. They put an ATA in the box. Okay. Yeah, I had a customer with a door bell that wasn't working. Uh -huh. Right. IP based or some kind of a doorbell, but anyway, yeah, you guys, Abraham, went out there and resolved it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, thank you. I mean, you know, we really have, we really have good people, and I'll just, uh, you know, I appreciate the testimony, but I will say that our technicians, some of you know them, our technicians have an average tenure of seven years with IP phone. So they've, they, they've been, they've done everything. It's like that insurance ad, all right? We know a little bit about it because we know, we've seen everything, all right, whatever that guy says, all right? But we've done it all. So you can count on them to come to a solution. And we'll do a truck roll for a doorbell. Yeah, I just want to point out that, that specific customer I did, we did, it was like 60 seats or 50 seats, something like that. And we sold them an FPL circuit, got, helped them stay within their cost. But they had like a SIP hot pod vendor in there. And they had a system that wasn't working. They had firewalls that weren't really working right. And Abraham came in and emulated an environment that they were looking for that was not traditional hosted because they were locking at some time. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you guys came out and he really customized it and gone and it was just, it was really great. That yeah, I mean, this is, uh, you know, yeah, thank you. I don't you. think yeah. another provider would have been able to locally do that and, and you know, been so hands on. Yeah, I mean, we have, you know, with some really smart people who can get, you know, fix messes, all right, or, you know, and do one off, you know, you know workarounds and these kinds of things. So, thanks again. To, all right, so vertical markets. You know, I've uh, been going to these uh, conferences and there's a big push now to uh, sell vertically. Some of you may be doing that already in your own space. But you know, we have, we have history and testimony in all of these uh, verticals, all right? We have customers with, with letters and referrals and references from all of these. Hospitality, we're big in. We have about uh, four, uh, 13 or 14 hotels installed. We've done, our notable one, of course, is we have four club meds. We just did one on the beach. We have a couple in Fort Lauderdale. So we know how to do, you know, do that hotel thing and integrate with the property management systems. If you have the opportunity, if you have a hotel, we'll do a site survey and we'll quote it for you, all right? The pricing on the rooms is a lot less than it is for normal uh, PBX pricing, special pricing. All right, because nobody uses the phone from the room anyways. Right? And when's the last time? You, oh, I think I'll use this phone and call long distance. All right? <laughs> How much is it? It's only $2, $2 a minute? <laughs> All right? All right, healthcare. Healthcare is the same thing. You know, nursing homes, rehab centers, you know, off, doctor's offices, urgent care. 
The interesting thing about you know, the nursing home business, it's very similar to a hotel business, only you just don't know when they're checking out. <laughs> you knew that was coming, right? <laughs> Halfway through that line, you knew I was. That means me, you've seen me too many times. But I'm bum. All right, anyways, I always go into these places. So someday, how about that corner room? That might be good. All right, we've done about 12 or 15 uh, law firms ranging from you know, five lawyers to, you know, to 150, 200 lawyers. You know, so we have testimony in that. Accounting, we, we go to the accounting show every year. We put up a booth. Uh, we do education. We have Montessori schools. We just did the Florence Fuller uh, uh, daycare in, um, in, in Boca Raton with 150 phones. So ladies and gentlemen, we have, we have the ability and the willingness to do any, any one-off kind of interesting thing, all right? and of course the offshore business. We have you know, PDFs that talk a little bit about what we do. We actually own this website. So if you go to iphospitality.com, you'll see a whole built website talking about how we do hotels, all right? You know, we're going to, you know, we're channel partners. This is a vertical that we have. And again, if you have these kinds of prospects, bring them to us. You know, we'll do the quote, we'll do the site survey. It's a big business, they're all moving to host it. All right, our managed services, I'm, you know, I'm not that technical, but I will tell you that this new edge mark, the one I told you about that's sitting on the back there, is designed to, uh, to offer sort of fundamental SD-WAN capability so you can have dual bandwidth running simultaneously. All right, I don't know what it does over that, but it does that. So, you know, it solves the issue of disaster recovery or any outages for people, all right? You know, we'll do a webinar on it. You can read about it. It's in, I have it in there, okay? It also does the QoS. It does the QoS and has up to uh, 100 uh, talk paths. Right, call management and will minimize drop packets, especially if you have your people on Comcast, which is pretty critical. We've done deployments where they had no router, and Vonage, let's say, and Comcast is the provider. We went in, so Vonage out of there, put in the router, and all the leakage went away. Mm -hmm. The router is very critical to good quality. Yeah, and, we, and, and, we, and, that, and as everybody knows, now, this is one thing that IP phone, you know, I don't know if it differentiates us particularly, but we encourage, almost insist, that this router goes in, because otherwise you're just asking for trouble. How all right? Is it? It's, you know, 20, 25, depending on the deal, you know. It's under uh, 15 feet or 15 miles. Yeah. Okay? But, you know, I get it. If somebody's making the transition from, a, from their communication system to another one, you know, for 50 cents a day mm -hmm. for the integrity of the entire service, please. So right? It does. It separates uh, voice and data and prioritizes voice packets well, as well, in and out. In and out. Over your, over something yep. Wired. And there is a survivability uh, feature in it, uh, which I'm not sure if it's extra or not. I'd have to, I'd have to get back to you on that. But it says uh, that if, there, <clears throat> if, you, if your power goes out in the building, you can make calls within the confines of your enterprise, in the building, because it, it, it knows it and it does, the, the calls don't leave the premise, if you will. Okay? Keeps it on-prem you know, extension dialing in the in what have you. But, you know, there's, you know, there's a lot of information about this, so anything you want to know, you can certainly find out. Okay? All right, so that's uh, IP phone and what we are and what we're doing. Yes. Quick question. Holy crap. I was, I was, I, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah. Not. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> and, and it cost you about 600 in X. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not. <laughs> what? On what? On what again? No, we, we bring it right. Right. Yeah, bring it right in. Yep. No, yeah. So you just have to follow the fiber. And our and our people are on prem, you know, whenever they do these these things too, by the way. But, but your team will extend the DMARC. Is that what you're saying? I mean bring it up the riser? No. 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 Not if they need it. Usually the no. It's not you, extended, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. But if you buy FTL through them, then they will extend it. Yeah. Right. Okay. But let me let me just say this about that. 
whatever question that you have or any, any, any concern that you have or anything that you want to know, don't, you know, don't think we don't do things, if you will, all right? You know, always give us the benefit of the doubt because there's a very good chance that we'll, you know, if, if there's a way to do what you need to do, we'll get it done, all right? Yes? Yeah. Time. He actually almost tripled the MRC over what I was coming in on. So as the client asked, well, his mortgage was due. Yeah. <laughs> his mortgage was due. He just wanted to. And, and by the way, <laughs> let me just, <laughs> Eric the Hurricane, love it. All right, let me just say something about this, just in generally speaking. Okay, we did a study last year, and you know, obviously we want you to call us for every opportunity you, you get. All right, that's your decision. I'm just asking. All right? But I will tell you that our folks, you know, John, Eric, myself, whoever you bring, your chances of getting this sale, I promise you, will increase. Not to disparage your, your, yourself, but I'm, we know these things. It's our product. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, you can wait in the car. You can wait in the car. I take Eric out on calls, he waits in the car. All right? With no air conditioning, windows up. <laughs> He's out in the window like this. All right? But do you okay? But do you understand? We're available to go on any call. But you know, we're certainly. My two o'clock alarm. You're two, oh, oh you're, is that for your power nap? Yeah. <laughs> so you know, if you're going to use John, you have to use him before two because from two to four is uh, siesta time. We have a running joke. I call him later today and I say, hey, I hope I didn't wake you up. No, I don't, and this is, this is your 2 o'clock wake-up call. All right, we have some fun. We have some, by the way, we have some fun. You know, fun people, too. You, you know, if it's not fun, it's not anything. I think you'd all agree with that. Because, I mean, telecommunications is pretty mundane at the end of the day. All right? You know, it makes a nice living, but you've got to keep a smile on your face, right? All right. So let's move on a little bit. As I mentioned earlier in the day, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be pretty brief about this because I know it's getting a little late in the day and it's 450 degrees in here. All right? <laughs> Celsius, though. Celsius, though. <laughs> All right? Um, <clears throat> I was a, uh, for about 15 years, I was a professional sales trainer for the telecommunications industry. I was, a, you know, an award-winning salesman, did a lot, but then I went on the road and did about 1,000 uh, sales trainings all over the United States and all over the world for about 15 years. Still have 680,000 frequent flyer miles to attest to it also. So I thought what I'd like to do generally at the end of these, and I've done them before, is uh, invoke some, you know, some fundamental kind of, you know, bring back to you about, you know, what you used to do when it really worked, all right? So we're going to talk about today our, what we compete for in, in the world because you, you compete with how many people? Millions. I mean, it's, right? You compete with all kinds of people. You compete with the guy sitting next to you. I can't believe right. you're sitting next to him <laughs> any, in general, right? I wouldn't, for crying out loud, right? He t you know, he had a bigger piece of pie than you, too, you know, so. Anyways. So we compete on a lot of fronts. We compete with our peers. We compete with our competitors. We compete with the buyer you know, for their uh, ability to see you, for their willingness to see you. So we, comp we compete on three fronts. And I can talk about all three. I'm only going to talk about one today. So we compete for money. Because if I'm a buyer and I own a company, and I'm going to be making decisions this year, I can only make so many decisions. I can't buy everything I want because I won't have enough what? I won't have enough money. So I have to buy things that are, I think that are important that I should be doing now. And you know, that's your job to convince me to do that, that that's how I should spend my money. Number two is, another one is we compete for comfort. Because you only buy from people that you what? That you like and trust. End of the day. That's very fundamental. You've every, sales 101 when you were 12 years old and knew you were going into sales because you got C's in school, right? <laughs> that's what it said. I always like to think of myself as instead of a C level, I'm just a C student, <laughs> all right? All right, but I knew it very early, and one of the things I knew is that I, the first time somebody meets me, I want them to like me, because if they don't like me, I could be giving my crap away, and they're not taking it, mm -hmm. all right? So, you know, that being said, and the last one is, is time. Because everybody is what? Busy. Everybody's busy. Everybody is being inundated, particularly in today's world, by the, the, the incumbent messaging Text messages, emails, phone calls, voicemails, chats, I don't care what it is, you can't get away from it, it's pervasive. 
sickening, frankly, when you really think about it. So how do I get someone's time? Because I need their time to do what? To offer my product and tell them why they should have it and why it's the best decision they'll ever make. But it's hard to get people's time, is it not? Because they are busy. And, because, and as soon as they know you're in sales, they're even more busy. <laughs> All right? So let's talk about this issue. So there are two issues that go into my uh, little presentation here today. One is time and one is timing. One is a finite set of numbers, is it not? 24 hours a day, 30 days in the month, you know, eight hours a day, you know, those kinds of things. Timing is a strategy. If you knew what time would be absolutely the best time to call me and I would actually pick up the propensity for me to pick up the phone, would that be your, to your benefit? Yeah. Right? It's hard. I don't have a crystal ball. It's very hard to know. But I will suggest to you, ladies and gentlemen, that there are some thought processes that you can use to maybe maybe just use some leverage on this. So I'm going to go through some of this. And all of this, by the way, I'm not trying to tell you to do stuff that you already do that's really successful. This is nothing more than Stu's views. OK? All right. OK, so once upon a time, there was time. The world was slower. People talked to everybody. You could stop and talk to somebody on the street. Now nobody even picks up their freaking head. All right? Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, I could stay, you go to like uh, some busy street in Miami or New York or Boston, you could just stand there in the middle, you get bumped every five seconds. <laughs> just stand still, okay? All right, so once upon a time, there was time, but that, those days are over, ladies and gentlemen. So first of all, let's talk about investing time. First of all, you should, everybody here should have short and long-term goals. What am I gonna do this week? What am I gonna do this year? What, am I, what are my goals? Pre-call planning, so if you have an appointment with me tomorrow afternoon at three o'clock in the afternoon, you better do some homework. Because the more you know about me before you walk in the door, the more I'm gonna like you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be happy that you went to my website. I'm gonna, know, I'm gonna be happy that you know that there are other people in my business that you've sold to. Because companies have inane company names now. ABC distributors. What the hell is that? Okay? But if you go on my website, you'll see what I distribute. You'll see where I am. Maybe you have a customer next door. So do some pre-call planning. Don't just walk in and hope for the best with a bunch of brochures, all right? Post-call analysis. What happened on the call? How did that go? What's, the next, what's my next move? What's the action item? Uh, outside networking, whoop, outside networking, outside reading, customer contact. You know, I, I don't want to get, I'm not going to do a deep dive into it today, but all of these things are relevant, all right? You can't just think that you just sell, all right? You're a business person. Okay, let's talk about the uh, issues of time. I'm a, my big pet peeve in life is punctuality. So you have an appointment tomorrow morning at 11. So according to your MapQuest or Google, it says that it's a 17 minute drive, right? In Miami, <laughs> right? So you said, no problem. For my 11 o'clock appointment, I'm going to leave at 17 minutes of 11. I'm in, no problem. So at about 10 after 11 and you're just on the same street you started off on, all right? You've got to call the customer, right? And say, I'm going to be about half hour late and, and the, they're going to probably say what? Forget about it because you're going into lunchtime or if you arrive 10 minutes after because you were afraid to call them and didn't want to screw it up from that point of view, you get there 10 minutes later and they say, tell me a little bit about yourself. And you say, I'm the most reliable person you ever met. So, ladies and gentlemen, I will leave you with the thought on punctuality that it is the only thing and the first thing they ever know about you if they've never met you before. Right? Would you all agree? So you have an 11 o'clock appointment tomorrow. What time do you go up to the receptionist and say, I'm here to see Stu? No, see, everybody said a different time. It's beautiful. Right? If you get there at a quarter of, you're intimidating. If you get there a quarter off, quarter after, you're a loser. Right? So what time is the best time to give my card and say, I'm here to see Stu? I would say one minute of, and I'll tell you why. I would give that receptionist the card and say, could you tell Stu I'm here for my 11 o'clock appointment? She's going to go back or he's going to go back and say, Stu, uh, Joe is here for his 11 o'clock appointment. What's the f where's the first place he's going to look? Oh. Yeah. Love that guy. <laughs> Love that guy. <laughs> right? Fundamental, is it not? Yeah. Does it have anything to do with telecom? No. Nothing. But it does, it does have something to do whether you get liked. And if you don't get liked, you don't get the sale. And if you do get liked, you've got a chance. All right? 
Okay, so your time may not be their time, right? Oh, I'd like to see this guy at 10. That's really good for me. It gives me plenty of time to you know, go out for breakfast, do this, that, and the other thing. And then when I'm done, I have plenty of time to meet Pete for lunch. So 10 o'clock would be really great for me. All right? What about the person you're calling on who is way more important at this point in time because they have your commission than your time, right? And I would submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that 10 o'clock is the, the most and 10 and 2, by the way, I call it the 10 and 2 syndrome. I don't know why it's that. Maybe it's where we hold the wheel, all right? But the point is, if, so, if you ask somebody, what time should I come in and see you, they'll go 10 o'clock. I say it's the worst time. How busy are people by 10 o'clock in the morning, right? All of a sudden, Mr. Happy comes in here with his PBX, <laughs> right? I've got 9,000 emails, four emergencies. My power is off, right? So what, who are you again? Not happens all the time, but you get, it, everything's a chance. Everything's a chance. Oh, no, you never confirm. Oh, I'm glad you called. Who are you again? All right. So 10 o'clock is a terrible time to have your first appointment because what are you going to do before it? Nothing. You're not going to do anything. It's a rare, you can't have a 9 o'clock. You can't have a 9 and a 10, right? I don't care if it's five minutes away. You can't be there on time. So you say, oh, well, I'm on cruise time till let's say, 17 minutes to 9, because it's a 17 minute drive. Okay? So, and after that 10 o'clock appointment, can you have one at 11? You, you can't make an 11 o'clock appointment. What if the 10 o'clock runs till 11.20? Things are going good. You're in the midst. So you can't do that. So you have to be very cognizant of your time. But if you have an appointment at 9, ladies and gentlemen, can you have an appointment at 11? Very good chance. God forbid you should have two appointments in one day. Don't tell anybody because they'll expect it from you, all right? So think about when's the best time to see people, all right? When do you think the best time to see people is if you, if you, if you had to bet on it? First thing, first thing out of the gate, I want to get somebody when they're fresh. I want to get somebody when they're fresh because, and by the way, if you have an appointment at 10, there's a very good chance you're, you're a party could have another appointment at 11, and if it's going really great and it's like five minutes off, they start looking at their what? You're going, oh, shit, I got this guy. Right? Don't. Your, your other guy's not showing. I saw him. <laughs> all right. Now, you know, I make light of all this stuff, but, you know, some of this stuff holds water. You just have to be a little cognizant of it. Because I would say to you, having an appointment with a bona fide candidate for your products and services at any given time is the best thing you can possibly have. I think it's like the best, third or fourth best feeling there is. I had one guy say it was number one. I said, get a life. <laughs> All right? <clears throat> Anyways, let's talk. So we have different time frames, OK? The minute, the day, the week, the, you know, everything comes into finite. It's all, this is about time. Now let's take a look at timing. So I got a little bit involved here. OK, so strategic time management is more than just luck. All right. So <clears throat> I get 15 calls a day for people that want to see me by appointment. What time do you think they all ask for? No, no. 10. They all ask for 10. I'm sorry I already got one. Well, how about two? Matt? You're a little late for that one too, big boy. Got anything else available this week? All right, anyways. So these are the times of the day. I'll, make a, I'll just blow through this pretty quick because I could take an hour with this and I won't. But anyways, the normal business day is what? Nine to what? Five. Nine to five, right? They even made a movie about it. Lily Tomlin, Dolly Parton, Jane, Jane Fonda, nine to five. Those, the three gals that starred in that movie were rejectionists, I mean receptionists. Because <laughs> they're the ones that you come in there and they try to block you and do all this stuff or they, or they screen your call. You know, I, I'd like to talk to Dan, please. Well, who's calling? Well, this is Stu. Stu who? What are you, a poet? <laughs> Just kidding. I can do that with Stu who. Okay? But anyways, there's a very good chance that when you call, you're trying to call somebody, I don't care if it's for an afterthought or a first call or I don't care what it is, there's a very good chance that if you call between 9 and 5, right, you're going to get screened. All right? But if you call before 9, who might answer the call? Maybe the person you're, that you're actually looking for. If you call after 5, guess who stays late? You think the receptionist stays after 5? Oh, I'm having such a good day. I think I'll work till 6. <laughs> you ever see a receptionist 10 to 5? 9, 8. <laughs> the hell with this place again, right? So, and the other one, the other one to think about, by the way, is between 12 and 1. 
you being in sales, in as entrepreneurs, you can eat lunch when? Whenever. Whenever you want. The worst time to eat lunch in the world is what? It's at noon. Because who eats lunch at noon? Everybody. You can't get a table. You get long lines. Everything stinks. You could eat lunch at 1.30 and just cruise into any restaurant on the planet and say, table for one, right here. Okay? And a lot of decision makers eat lunch where? At their desk. John, where do I eat lunch? At desk. For how long? Not very long. For for I've been, I bring my lunch every day for 30 years. All right? I learned this very early in my career. Take too, it takes too long to go to a restaurant and have lunch. There's other, other schools of thought that so you should take people to lunch and all that. I can't sit with somebody I don't know for an hour and a half. I just, I, I, I mean, 20 minutes and I'm going, what the hell am I doing here with this guy? Right? You, yeah, I'm rounding up with 20 minutes. But anyways, between, between 12 and 1, I'm just, but between 12 and 1 could be very productive time. Sometimes the people you want to call are at their desk. Not all the time, but just maybe. None of this is in cement, but it's certainly, in, you know, in the mixture. All right? All right. So anyways, there are a lot of other times. I believe that 4 o'clock is a great time to have an appointment. Why? 4 o'clock. When do we know? Right? And people are, you know, they're worn down for the day. A lot of the dust is gone already, right? And how long can this appointment last? As long as it needs to. <laughs> Some places four, and I know them all. All right? You know, salespeople, we can be at happy hour any day at any time. We make those the rules, right? We can be at, in the bar stool at five. If you work nine to five, you just can't. <laughs> the hell with them, all right? Anyways, long story short, 4 o'clock is a great time to have an appointment because what if things are going well? You got all the time to work. Yeah, yeah, day's over. Okay, also 11 o'clock is good. Why? Because if things are going good, you can take them to lunch. It's all a little bit of strategy there. Okay, let's go on a little bit. All right, now let's talk about the days of the week. Remember? Hours, days, weeks, months. So let's talk about the days of the week. Monday. Who loves Monday? Right? One person on the planet, Renee. All right? That's because somebody kicked them out of the house. All right? All right? Think about the songs. Think, think, think about the songs written on Monday. This, is, this will sort of be the, this is the empathy towards our, our feeling about Monday. Monday, I've got Friday on my mind. Manic Monday, Stormy Monday, Blue Monday. Right? Monday, Monday, can't trust that day. So, you know, I usually like to leave people alone Monday morning. Because, you know, after the weekend, things pile up. There could be issues and what have you. And all of a sudden, you call me and say, no, not now. All right? Now I hate you. I liked you, but now I don't like you anymore. All right? I'm just saying, leave, I leave people alone till Monday. All right? Tuesday, in my opinion, is the best time to have as many appointments as possible. Why? Because usually there's a next step, is there not? You've got to get them a quote. You've got to do a little, get some information. You can actually get it and return when? During the same week, while the iron is hot. Okay? Load them up Tuesday. Okay, Wednesday, what do they call Wednesday? Obviously, hump day. I mean, if you don't have your stuff going, I was gonna, you better get it going. It's Wednesday already, right? I can't believe it's Wednesday. But salespeople are notorious for doing things at the last minute, right? When did you study for finals? The night before. <laughs> the night before. Paul just did as good as the guy next to him. <laughs> Which is why most of us are doing what we're doing today. But it ain't a bad ride. It ain't a bad ride. Don't tell anybody. All right? Let's go on. All right. So Thursday, if you're going to make appointments, you know, and you're going to call people to try to see them for the following week, I think Thursday is, a, is an advantageous day because you're trying to set up this, you're using this week to set up next week before they have all their calendars filled. You know, it's, psycho, it's just basically a little bit of my own psychology. All right? So that was, I would carve out, you know, three or four hours and try to get everything you need to get going for next week so you can be prepared. All right? And Friday is a day when you want to close business. Everybody loves Friday. It's the end of the week. It's at the end of everything, right? And I used to have a great closing line on, that I would use on Fridays. What do you say we just wrap it up? <laughs> what do you say? If I didn't ask you to buy anything. I said, what do you say we just wrap this up? Because what gets wrapped up? Presents. And who doesn't like presents? <laughs> right? And, you know, you might even hear, why not? I love the words, why not? <laughs> Just as good as yes. Yeah. Right? No means yes. <laughs> no. Yeah. All right, let's go on. 
So in closing on this, ladies and gentlemen, there are better times to sell than others. Would you all agree? Yeah. All right. You know, I'm not telling you to you know, take courses on this, but you know, do, a little, do a little thinking when you've got something set up. All right? What am I going to do this week and next month? All right? The peak hours I talked about, be careful of the 10 and 2. Perimeters of the day are the best times to work because I think you're more alone. And I think the competition probably hovers towards the center. It's a lot easier to be there. The early bird and the night owl get the worm. Except the night owl gets the worm at the bottom of the tequila bottle generally. But <laughs> worm's a worm. Okay? The end of the day, try to see somebody at the end of each day. And by the way, here's the interesting thing. If you have an appointment at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, it forces you to do what? To work all day. What a concept. All right? Watch that 10 and 2 syndrome. Before 9 and after 5, you know, a lot of decision makers and owners who are the people you want to see come in early. IT people get in early too, by the way. They got busy, they got busy schedules. They got a lot of stuff on their plate. Uh, the lunch hour is not a bad time to call on people. And don't make your appointments always on the hour. This is one I didn't mention. I'll just mention it in passing. So if, you, if I ask you for an appointment at 945, what's your anticipation of when this is going to be over? 10 o'clock. Is it going to be over at 10 o'clock? No, it's psychological. Because if I asked you for an appointment at 10, you, you think I've, I've carved you out for how long? Yeah. An hour. Right? And how many people you think ask for, uh, how about 915? I can't even take it. <laughs> He can't even, he can't, he can't digest that. 915, do I have that in my book? Wait, oh, I do. I have never knew there was a 915, frankly. But they might be more inclined because it's not about the time, it's about getting the appointment, is it not? It's nothing to do with the time or them. Yeah. I just had this incident this morning. I told the client yesterday, he said, can I call you tomorrow? I said, he goes, I said, yeah, the report tonight is good. I said, call me at 8.32 and 14 seconds. You know when that phone rang? 813, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Right up, like people, people love to swing at the curveball, yeah. right? <laughs> Anybody can hit a fastball. <laughs> All right, let's go on. And TGI Friday, it's a good day to close business. And it may, not only does it make, not only do you get the sale, but how do you feel? You might, it might be a good weekend for a change instead of thinking, how am I going to pay things? Exactly. All right? All right, and clustering. The best time to make a sale is right after you just did what? Yes. Made one because you're actually feeling good for a change. Yeah, All right? You're on fuego, as they say, am I right? Let's go on. All right, so I'm going to end with this. This is Stu's time for fun. All the, all the one-liners I'm going to come out with, the word time is in the answer. Okay, ready? The game is going to start. If we hurry, we can get there just, just in time. All right, you get it? I know this is tough. <laughs> now you understand. It's like Jeopardy, and they, what was the category? All right, if money is time, then time is money. Mick Jagger might say, time is on my side. Yes, it is. If you're not seeing or looking for someone to sell to, you're just time. You guys are very good. I don't know how you do it, Rene. Right? He said, what's the next one? Show me the next one. If you don't, it should be make, if you don't make quota and lose your job, you'll have plenty of time. And lastly, if you steal from the company and get caught, you'll do time. Okay, let me end with the great combos in life. Anthony and Cleopatra, Beyonce and Jay-Z, Abbott and Costello, burgers and fries, chips and salsa, vodka tonic, Lou and Dan. I know where my bread is buttered. I, my bread's buttered, right? And of course, IP phone and TCG. Oh, I left it off. I ran out of space, thank God. All right? And here's the best combination of all, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your time.